interesting times we are having these uh, these days, in particular because of the COVID-19, which has uh, spread uh, uh, a long-lasting implications not only to the environment and, and to the global economy, but also to shipping. Um, but I have to say that the outbreak has actually also uh, provided us with some positive side effects uh, because we have been forced to some extent to re-examine our routines in shipping and uh, in that regard we have taken a gigantic leap forward uh, in working on a digital way in shipping which is very positive. Indeed, my name is Jeppe Juhl. I'm educated as naval architect. I've been working with BIMCO for about uh, eight years. And uh, information about BIMCO is put at the end of the presentation for those who, who want to, to know about it. But, but BIMCO is an uh, uh, international, uh, the largest direct impacted association with about covering about 65% uh, of the world tonnage. Yes, please, next. Um, if we look into conferences uh, these days, the most hot topic, of course, apart from digitalization in, in shipping, is uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals and also uh, how to comply with Paris Agreement and, and greenhouse gases and so on and so forth. Um, and in order to embrace this, uh, these, these important agendas, IMO has also developed their own uh, greenhouse gas uh, strategy in order to cope with, with these reduction in shipping. Uh, these reductions in carbon efficiency should be 40% in 2030 and 70% in 2015 and we should cut uh, or we should phase out the carbon in, in fuel in general uh, by the end of the century. So we have a tremendous uh, push uh, towards shipping to do uh, a lot of uh, uh, optimization and enhancement, not only on board the ships, but also ashore in ports, for instance. Um, to reach these goals, IMO has uh, issued a number of initiatives. And if you can change to the next slide, please. Um, some of these initiatives is actually not directly linked, but in, in a way they are anyway. And I will explain a little. Uh, some of this new regulation is actually requesting that uh, that we have to establish a system whereby we can have digital reporting when our ships uh, call a port. And this is quite important because it's a uh, it's a requirement to uh, 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 coastal states that they should implement these requirements. Uh, this is in some ways very positive because we will push for the digitalization in the maritime industry, but it's also a quite alarming. And the reason for this is that the, the coastal states and the flag states and port authorities and so on and so forth may actually develop own initiatives, uh, let's call them single national uh, single window maritime windows and and that will cause a tsunami of individual solutions which are not uh, aligned in such way that the ships can call each individual of the solutions in an easy way so uh, that will end up in a disaster please go to the next one so as I mentioned many times yesterday standards 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 and also harmonization is the solution to the issue. Um, it is only possible that we will have a fully digitalized maritime solution if we can establish a common uh, harmonized uh, way of communicating and exchange information across systems and platforms directly and with no need for additional services or devices. This is, however, not a simple solution as it sounds. Um, and uh, just to illustrate this as part of an EU fund project, uh, the efficiency, we did an assessment and discovered that uh, there could indeed be a huge uh, reduction in the admin burdens if standards could, could uh, speak with each other across platforms, as also mentioned yesterday. Please uh, go to the next slide. So um, 
the example in front of you is to just to illustrate four different standards we looked into. No systems share and exchange the same information. And I want to emphasize this. They exchange the same information, but do it in an individual way. And uh, though uh, these individual data elements are not called the same, this means that we cannot share data in an easy machine-to-machine way across platforms. So, so if we should uh, opt for such a solution, then we would simply just need to establish a system whereby we could communicate across platforms in a harmonized single data model. If you can go to the next one, please. So the simplified uh, s- solution is illustrated on the slide right now. So instead of having let's say 2,000 different solutions ashore, uh, combined with, let's say, 70,000 ships uh, in the global fleet, uh, we need to have a kind of interface, harmonized interface between the various solutions and the various ships in order for them to communicate in one language and one kind of data model. So regardless of the solution, we should be able to exchange the same information but across different platforms. In the illustration, I have just uh, illustrated three different APIs. Uh, One could be the maritime single window in Norway or in Singapore, for instance, uh, and we could also have an API uh, on the local data service provider. But in a way that we will have the ship to submit information directly to shore. That is the idea. And if you can go to the next one, I have illustrated this by a concept which I call the bow tie uh, concept solution. It, it uh, may uh, be a little difficult to, to, to see and understand, so I will explain it to you. Um, to the very left, uh, well, you was a bit too fast with print, pushing the next, but it doesn't matter, don't, don't go back. <laughs> It's fine. Just yeah, no, keep it there. <laughs> Thank you. If you if you look to the left, you will have the various data standards which we are uh, harvesting the information from. And to the very left, you will see where all this information should go to. All these maritime services, it could be immigration, it could be police, uh, and so on and so forth, it has been mentioned as part of the maritime single window. That is good and fine. But because we have the IMO requirement saying that we should establish a, 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 um, a, a common or, or individual uh, data exchange platforms, um, we cannot make sure that all this information goes directly into the maritime single window in the individual country. So if we take the data standard, collect all the relevant data element information, that could be ship name, it could be IMO number, it could be cargo information, it could be port of call, the next port of call, the previous port of calls, and so on and so forth, combine them into some data sets. It could be a data set related to the file information, it could be a data set collected to capture the stowaways, it could be on port logistic and so on and so forth. We could put that into the context of uh, IMO reference data model. Keep that word in mind, IMO reference data model. This data model will be our language to communicate between all the various pro- platforms. Then the, the, the reference data model, the IMO reference data model, can be converted into various API services and uh, maritime services. For instance, by the port state of Singapore, it could be the port state of Morocco, or it could be Korea, it could be whoever. They can do their individual platform based on the IMO reference data model. And as you can see, these service APIs could go into the maritime single window. It could be containing port information, and it could be containing all kinds of maritime service providers. And if you push next, then you will see it is actually forming a kind of of butterfly. This is a reason why I called it a Baotai concept solution. Please go to the next one. 
implementation of this IMO reference model, which is actually developed as we speak, um, it at this point in time contains a lot of information already. There is a, a section related to the data uh, uh, trade data set. We have a data set on customs, but we also have a maritime core data set containing the full IMO file compendium, as we uh, as we know. Um, we also have a maritime declaration on health. We have stowaways. Right now, we have port logistics operational data related to the just in time, which will I come back to in my presentation. Uh, ship certificates and so on and so forth. So right now we have these kind of data sets and where we need one data element in all the three data sets, we simply need to align that in order for the data set to be, or the data element to be the same across the various data sets. Please go to the next one. This is, uh, and please press next. This is how it looks right now. Um, the reference data model uh, contains about 300 data elements as we speak. Uh, additional 100 are pending for adoption at the virtual file meeting uh, end of this month. And further 250 data elements will be in the pipeline for, let's say, in, in, in cooperation over the next 12 months. Um, please go to the next one. And the whole idea is that we will have the solution, a simple solution, machine to machine exchange, which means one plus one is more than three. We will have a common uh, service specification combined with this IMO reference data model. So the data model will be incrementally uh, increased over time. If one data element or one information is lacking, then we can amend it according to the normal IMO procedure, but everybody can make use of this data model in order to exchange by use of the same language. Please go to the next one. So, um, to explain the link from the IMO uh, maritime reference data model to the port optimization, uh, we have to keep in mind the IMO greenhouse gas strategy and the focus on port uh, efficiency. I therefore in, uh, present you uh, with a small case uh, where we have made use of this uh, uh, data uh, model in order to improve the port air emission and uh, enhancing the port efficiency. Please go to the next one. As part of the strategy, we, uh, there's a recommendation saying that we should establish a concept of just-in-time arrival. Just-in-time arrival is a concept referring to maintaining the most efficient ship speed operating during the voyage uh, in order to arrive at the, for instance, the pilot boarding place when the port is ready for the ship to arrive to the port. Um, in this way, it would be uh, uh, a tool which provides a smart steaming instead of a slow steaming uh, because each hour we spend waiting outside the port is simply just waste of efficiency. It is waste of additional emissions. So we need to optimize the length of the voyage will when the berth is ready. And all these uh, effects uh, will actually avoid the port congestion. Please press next. And this is a description of the just-in-time arrival concept. And please, next again. Uh, the port congestion is, unfortunately, the normal of today. If you look at the upper left picture, it is uh, um, simply just a picture of uh, the ships waiting outside port of Fujiva in, in uh, UAE. Uh, the lower one is uh, a picture from Port of Singapore, and the other one is Port of uh, Ningbo in China, and you can see loads and loads and many ships are simply just waiting for no use. So instead of having the ship forcing the speed, go full steam ahead until they put down the anchor just outside the port, we will extend the voyage to such way that we can slow down the speed and save fuel at the same time and emission. Please go to the next one. 
there's a potential saving here. And uh, uh, the source of, uh, um, of uh, UN trade have uh, looked into uh, how much potential savings we could have by avoiding these weightings. And uh, to make a long story short, it is a huge potential that if we can reduce uh, about 140,000 port calls by port carriers, we could have a potential saving of 5.2 billion US dollar per year for the shipping. That is a very, very high number. Please go to the next one. So what we did, we looked into how to implement the simplest version of the just-in-time arrival concept and implement that to the IMO reference data model. Um, it was necessary to define uh, some places in the port, some some uh, some check marks, milestone. Uh, uh, what is it called? It's uh, yeah, it's it's. it's uh, some some places in the port whereby we could have a check of the time, and uh, then we need to have the timestamp implemented in the in the in the IMO reference data model. Please go to the next one. Um, but it's of course not only the just in time concept we should implement to the reference data model. It was also some contractual issues, and for those of you who are interested in contracts and clauses, uh, we. Uh, have developed by BIMCO, we have developed a special clause related to the just-in-time. Um, in the past, we have a clause for the virtual arrival. We are also uh, see trade management, the STM, which we developed in November 2018. But now we are in, in, in as we speak, we are developing a just-in-time clause simply to permit the shoppers to request the owners to adjust the speed. So the ship will be allowed to arrive to the port at the given time. That is very, very, very important. So the IMO reference data model implemented into a single window concept together with the contractual uh, considerations, then we actually have a sustainable solution which ship owners and shadows will make use of. Please go to the next one. This is my second last slide. Um, Many of you are, of course, interested in, in the data set in the IMO reference model. Right now, we are waiting uh, some more uh, data sets to be implemented. Uh, right now, is pending uh, environmental information. We also have uh, information on specific shipping conditions, uh, general safety information, additional cargo details at consignment level, which needs to be implemented, and also notification of readiness and bills of lading information. So there's a lot of things which are still pending, but that will be implemented, let's say, over the next 12 months. Um, but it is important that, that when the expert group who are dealing with this IMO data reference model, they uh, they have pending um, submissions on the maritime service according to the e-navigation, and also acknowledgement receipts and uh, IMO safety information and uh, a bit more on the certificates. So lots of new data elements is coming into the data model in a very short period of time. And my last slide is the conclusion that uh, to conclude the presentation, we want to highlight that this data reference is is a fact. It's it's, it's actually when on the way. We can only collaborate uh, by exchanging uh, same information and speak the same language between all the various platforms. And uh, if we can do that in a harmonized way we are actually able to reduce the administrative burden of 80%, 8, 1, 8, 80% uh, according to what we have today. And that is a burden which we certainly should reduce uh, because we can do it in a simple and easy way. And with regard to the greenhouse gas uh, case, which I illustrate the, the port optimization, uh, we certainly need to call for action because we have to reduce uh, the emission not only on board the ship during the voyage, but also in port. And uh, that we can do by implementing the just-in-time concept uh, as a low-hanging fruit. 
simply just to reduce uh, carbon emission footprint. I think that was my short presentation. 15 minutes is not long, and I think I was a bit overdue. Uh, but uh, please go to the next slide, and uh, that was the end of my presentation. Thank you.